Hi again, guys. Last lesson, we were talking about the um, the biosphere carbon cycle uh, between the biosphere and the atmosphere. This lesson, we are going to be talking about the marine carbon cycle between the oceans and the atmosphere. Now, if you could uh, see carbon dioxide you would see carbon dioxide going into the oceans and about the same amount of carbon dioxide coming out of the oceans. But actually the carbon cycle is, um, the marine carbon cycle is much more complicated than that. And it's actually made up of uh, three different parts. Um, the first part is called the solution pump the second part is called the biological pump, and the third part is called the carbonate pump. And, and these three pumps are cycles in their own right. They are separate cycles, but they do interact with, with each other as well. Okay, let's talk about the solution pump first. It's number one here. Um... Well, this is quite simple. The carbon dioxide just gets dissolved into the seawater. Um, the colder the seawater, the more carbon dioxide can be dissolved. This cold seawater, because it's cold, sinks to the bottom of the ocean very slowly, uh, and then... Uh, perhaps uh, it will move towards uh, warmer climates, for example, towards the equator, and then uh, rise up again. And because it's you know, near the equator and it's rising up out of the cold water, um, the, the water cannot contain the carbon dioxide any longer, and it releases the carbon dioxide as bubbles, which float to the surface and go out into the atmosphere again. The easiest way to imagine this is if you were to think of a fizzy drink and you were to heat the fizzy drink up, or, uh, all the fizz would come out of it, all the bubbles would come out of it and go into the atmosphere. This carbon cycle is very slow. In fact, uh, it really depends on the turning over of the oceans and the turning over of the oceans can take really anything up to a thousand years. Now the solution pump can interact with the carbonate pump and that's because the, some of the carbon dioxide which dissolves into the water turns into carbonic acid and the carbon dioxide which turns into the carbonic acid can make up part of the carbonate pump which is number three. Now, Carbon dioxide actually behaves a, a little bit strangely in water in that the colder the water is and the higher the pressure, the more the carbon dioxide, um, more carbon dioxide can be held in a colder and water with a higher pressure. So there is m more carbon contained in the deep oceans which are cold and have high pressure than um, in the top layers of the ocean. Okay, let's move on to the second marine carbon cycle, which is called the biological pump. The biological pump is very similar to the land-based carbon cycle between the biosphere and the atmosphere. But instead of leaves doing the photosynthesis, phytoplankton and algae do the photosynthesis. So the carbon dioxide is absorbed into the phytoplankton and algae, the sunshine on the phytoplankton and algae, and this releases the, the oxygen from the carbon dioxide and the phytoplankton and the algae uh, keep the carbon. Then S small sea creatures, very small sea creatures, they will eat the phytoplankton and um, the algae and then perhaps shrimps will eat these small little creatures and the carbon will move up the food chain 
um, shellfish and fish will then eat the shrimps. So these shrimps uh, will be uh, re respiring, uh, they'll be respiring carbon dioxide, breathing out carbon dioxide uh, into the oceans. And of course some of that will, will dissolve into the oceans, but some of it will find its way back into the atmosphere again. Now some of this uh, phytoplankton or algae will die, so, you know, some of the shrimps and shellfish and the fish will die. And as they float, or as they sink, I should say, to the bottom of the ocean, uh, they decay. Uh, the bacteria eats them, biodegrades them, and the bacteria once again breathe out the carbon dioxide, um, which can find its way out of the ocean back into the atmosphere again. Okay, so that was the, the biological pump there. So, so far we've had the solution pump and the biological pump. It's quite interesting. The solution pump, you can almost think of it as a, a sort of physical pump. And the biological pump, yes, it's to do with biology. But the carbonate pump is a chemical reaction which goes on in the sea. So let's start off with the carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide can enter the ocean and then um, some of it can turn into carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is a, is a very weak acid. But from carbonic acid, because it's an acid, it can lose a hydrogen ion and become a bicarbonate ion. And then from a bicarbonate ion, it can lose another hydrogen ion to become a carbonate ion. Let's have a look at the formula for that. So this here is the formula. Uh, so we said the carbon dioxide enters the water. It reacts with the water to create carbonic acid. Um, the carbonic acid can lose a hydrogen ion, which can just go off and float off in the sea somewhere, um, leaving behind uh, bicarbonate ions. The bicarbonate ions can then lose another hydrogen ion and become carbonate ions. The sea is actually normally saturated with carbon, uh, carbonate ions. Let's go back and look at the diagram again. So here's this process again. The carbon dioxide entering the oceans, reacting with water, creating a weak carbonic acid, uh, which then can change into bicarbonate ions and then change into carbonate ions. Notice here I've drawn in arrows, double-ended arrows. This is to illustrate that the reaction is an equilibrium reaction. And what does that mean? Let's uh, have a look at another diagram. I want you to imagine two beakers full of, well, there's some water in two beakers, and they're joined together with a pipe at the bottom. Now, if we were to put water into beaker A, the water would naturally flow towards the right until the water levels became the same again. That's what we mean by an equilibrium reaction. Likewise, if we took water out from beaker A, then the water would naturally flow from B to A, and a new level of water would be found. That's basically what's happening here as well. For example, if uh, the sea region is in an area of high carbon dioxide, then this will enter the sea, react with the seawater, and create carbonic acid. But if uh, the region above um, starts to have a low concentration of carbon dioxide, then the carbonic acid will lose its carbon back into the atmosphere again. 
And that is the same with this reaction and this reaction here. Now that's not the end of the story, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a buffer reaction. We're going to have a look at another diagram for that. Now can you remember in the first reaction uh, we created carbonate ions? Well, from this uh, we can have the carbonate ions here. If we were to add more carbon dioxide and the whole reaction took place in seawater, we would create bicarbonate ions. Well that's quite interesting isn't it? Because we had bicarbonate ions here. So we have the carbonate ions which were created here. We add carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide actually uses these um, carbonate ions to create bicarbonate ions. This process is known as the ocean buffer. This chemistry allows 10 times more carbon dioxide to be held by the seawater. Let's see what this means when we go back and look at the original diagram. So here's the carbon dioxide which dissolves in the water which reacts with the, the carbonate ions which produce bicarbonate ions. But this reaction is also an equilibrium reaction which means it can go the other way. So we can go from the bicarbonate ions to the carbonate ions and that will in fact produce carbon dioxide which will bubble up in the oceans and go back into the atmosphere again creating a carbonate pump. And here we can see it with the formula. We're going from the bicarbonate ions towards the carbonate ions so you can see that carbon dioxide uh, will be created when carbonate ions are created too. Okay, that completes the third marine carbon cycle. Um, I've pretty well finished talking about the marine carbon cycles now. Just a few points though. All these cycles they do interact with each other. Uh, for example here we have carbon dioxide here. There's no reason why this carbon dioxide here uh, can't be part of this process here. The other thing I'd like you to take note of because I'm going to be talking about it in the next video is the limestone on the seafloor. The limestone that's the same stuff which shells are made from, calcium carbonate. And this can uh, end up on the seafloor in, um, in, in a few different ways. Let's have a look at a few different ways. For example, the shellfish here, some of them could, could die and sinks to the bottom of the ocean and that would eventually end up in, um, if there were enough shellfish, limestone on the bottom of the ocean. The other process is here. This carbonate can actually create calcium carbonate and calcium carbonate is limestone which can sink to the bottom of the ocean. Once again this is a two-way reaction and the limestone can actually dissolve into uh, the seawater again. And finally, one last point I do want to talk about is something called ocean acidification. Can you remember we said in the third example, the carbonate pump, uh, we said the carbon dioxide uses up the carbonate ions. So here's the carbon dioxide. It uses up the carbonate ions uh, to make um, bicarbonate ions. But low carbonate ions cause calcium carbonate, that's seashells, and coral reefs to dissolve. In other words, the carbonic acid uh, is reacting with the seashells. So that's called um, ocean acidification. And we'll just have a, a quick look at a weak acid reacting with calcium bicarbonate in other words, seashells or coral reefs. 
as you will see, this extra carbon going into the, the seawater, the extra carbon which humans produce, this anthropogenic carbon, uh, it doesn't look like it's very good for creatures with shells or coral reefs either. The carbon dioxide going into the seawater might help uh, us humans a little bit because there'll be less concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So that should mean there's less global warming. But it's not s such good news for the fish and the seashells in the ocean. OK, watch this little clip. OK, here is a demonstration of uh, calcium carbonate dissolving. On the right here we have normal chalk, the same sort of chalk I use on a blackboard. And on the left, just zooming in here now, we have a shell. This shell and uh, this piece of chalk, they are dissolving in a weak acid. In this case it's vinegar. But um, the same reaction would happen with carbonic acid as well, because carbonic acid is a weak acid. Uh, we can see the carbon dioxide bubbles um, coming off the shell as it dissolves into the water.